Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Jason Pizzino with your Hopium Free Cryptocurrency Update. Today we're going to look at Ethereum news, DOT, uni charts, some Bitcoin and a small cap which I've talked about once before on the channel but we're going to dive into it just a little bit deeper. So before we dive in, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, like the video up, it does go a long way to helping out the channel for free, a nice easy way to support the channel. Cool guys, let's move on. We've got a few videos from this week which I wanted to just bring to your attention. This one here, Bitcoin, a good one to go back and watch if you haven't already. We go through using the FIB, the 50% FIB and looking at how to use that for buy areas as a dollar cost averaging method into Bitcoin on the dips. So to understand when to buy the dips. I'll look at that in the charts as well in a moment. A couple of these other videos, property cycle videos, the entire world, not just Australia. Check this out. We are in a mega, mega bull run. If you're interested in other things other than cryptocurrency, we're going to funnel some of these profits into. And lastly, we have some old uh, cryptocurrency, some altcoin gems that I've got back here. So check those videos out. All right, first piece, let's look at the coin market cap, 1.7 trillion. Bitcoin has just squeezed its way over a trillion dollars again, back to 55,000 after dipping to 50,000. Ethereum, 1700 US. We are still consolidating above this old all-time high, the old $1,400 level, and just been bouncing between the 14 and the, or more so the, the 15 and the $2,100 level. You know, we've talked about that on the channel already, so I will review the time periods that we are waiting for a breakout in Ethereum. So for me, it's another reaccumulation area. I like it as a, a way to gain more Bitcoin as the prices will eventually go up throughout the rest of this bull market. Binance has dropped to fourth, Cardano to fifth. Cardano was at third for a little while there and now we're just seeing it basically lose a little bit of ground against some of the big, the big uh, cryptocurrencies here. Polkadot, 33 bucks, dr uh, dropped to around 29. So there was a little bit of a buying opportunity there with Polkadot. Uniswap is still just struggling to gain any traction after the, the uh, well, it's kind of a flop news on the version 3 announcement. And so when we get bad news, well, when we get good news and it doesn't turn into the price chart, then it will usually take a little while longer to build up some momentum to take off again. So Uniswap could be building up for something else, but at the moment it's looking a little bit laggy. Theta also down from its highs after such a massive run, probably needs some time to cool off and uh, we can keep that on our records as something to look at down the track because we want to get into great big projects which, have, which we're not going to jump into as the pumps on, but we want to get into on the decline. Okay, let's have a look at our market sentiment indicators as well. Just some basic ones here. We always look at Google Trends. We got NFT, Cardano, and there were some comments about people saying, well, if I'm looking for Cardano, I'm gonna look at ADA. And the reason why I don't look at ADA is because you can't just search for ADA. There's there are gonna be too many searches for that. It's too generic. And so we look for Cardano and it is just having a bit of a range bound move here, just tops to bottoms, tops to bottoms and not seeing too much. It's on the way down at the moment. So if we do see it fall below the dollar value on Cardano, it could be another great buying opportunity. So I'm not overly concerned if we get that fall. If you're a holder, great. Find some more cash to get into Cardano and look to build your position so that you can stake some Cardano in the future, which I'll have some news on uh, coming up on the channel too, some staking pools on Cardano. So stick around for that. Uh, NFT, again, all time high. This is just going absolutely bonkers. It continues to uh, amaze me with how much interest it's getting with the public. And so that just continues on its way up. And I've got uh, an NFT type project coming up as well, which I'll talk about in future videos. All right, fear and greed, 65. We are starting to get a little bit greedier after yesterday's neutral reading. And so that's a, you know, let's look at that and think, well, maybe we're starting to get into that stage again where we should be buying up. But overall, I'm still pretty calm, cool, calm, collected with my Bitcoin holdings at that point. All right, so this is the first project before we get into the news, uh, GODB. So I like this project a lot. This is a new one. It's about a $50 million market cap at the moment. And it's basically rewarding the users 
for sharing data. So we share data all the time, all over Facebook, Instagram, Google, YouTube, right now from anything that you're watching, anything you click on, you're sharing data with these big companies. And for the most part, us as the users don't get any sort of reward. And with this, they reward you for sharing that data. And so I can see this growing to a much, much bigger project. If they can get it all right, then of course it's going to grow to a much, much bigger project. But you guys know the deal with risk and reward, so be sure to do your own research as well before jumping into anything like this. And so I'm looking at this, like I said, big data, it's going to reward the user. I think that's a pretty cool feature, especially when we're not getting that now. You're liking stuff, you're commenting on Facebook, you're using your time here on YouTube. It would be nice to get some sort of reward and you're going to be sharing the data with the ecosystem and then they can reward you in their token here. Now, a few things they've already got which look pretty cool. We've got strategic partners already, Chainlink, everyone loves some ocean in the crypto space. A few other partners which I haven't heard of, but I'm sure they must be doing something decent to be partnering in this space as well. Flame, Rate and Grade, Datalytics, Abacus, Group, uh, Groupo Next. Okay, so we obviously know the main ones as being Chainlink and Ocean Protocol. Further down on the page, it explains how it's going to be used and what they're going after. Less than 10% of a $260 billion big data market is being exploited due to an inefficient process and the dominance of intermediaries. Our mission is to democratize the big data market and open the door to 90% of not exploited data sharing market. Uh, places we can get it is Bitforex, Uniswap is the one that I trust. So that's G-O-D-B. The things that got me really excited with it is their token metrics. So they didn't look so good initially, but they're doing a massive, massive token burn. 65% of GEO tokens, this token will uh, token burn will reduce the max supply of GEO to 350 million. And this is coming in the next couple of days. So it's a 20, afternoon the 27th here in Australia, 29th of March. Next thing is a new token uh, tokenomics model. So that's uh, due to be released on the 5th of April. So I think we've got about a week, a week and a few days to really understand what's going on here, do the research. Overall, I think the project has a, a good use case. People will be getting paid to use it. It's a low cap at the moment, very small cap, and they're uh, adjusting their tokenomics. So all those things add up and that sounds really good. Uh, $1.89 currently and the market cap we could see just here at 25, I thought it was 50 million, but yeah, 25 million market cap. Circulating supplies only 12 million out of the 300, but like we said, like they said here, the 65% is going to be burnt. All right, this is the other thing, max supply, 350 million, and all they have here is 300 million, but that's the circulating, so they're going to be reducing the max supply down a little further. So that still means that the, if there is some circulating and they're held, then that could dump the price. So these are the, all the things we need to take into consideration when we're looking at a project here. All right, let's move on to some of the news and I'll look at GODB in future videos as well. But for now, I wanted to bring that to your attention. There are now seven high profile Bitcoin ETF applications, Canada's three Bitcoin ETFs and a number of high profile Bitcoin ETF applications in the US are piling pressure on the SEC to open the floodgates. So investment giant Fidelity filed for a Bitcoin ETF yesterday. One of at least seven companies hoping to get approval. So we've got another one in the US filing for a, a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, a little further down, there are now three Bitcoin ETFs in Canada, which hold a total of 16,600 Bitcoin. Bitcoin ETF is also launched in Brazil, but I, I suppose most people aren't as interested in that as they are for a US ETF coming our way. Some NF, oh, let me introduce you. Izzy, say hello. G'day everyone. You guys are here to see cryptocurrency news, not babies, but we need her to be quiet. So let's carry on with some of the news before she cracks it and then we'll get rid of it. You're a good girl. All right. Some NFT sales could be illegal. SEC Commissioner Hester, Hester Pierce, crypto mom said investors should be careful not to create unregistered securities when buying and selling fractional shares in an NFT. So further down, fractionalized NFTs could potentially be securities, she said. The whole concept of an NFT is it's supposed to be non-fungible, so it's supposed to be unlike anything else. And that was something that I was thinking about when these NFTs were coming out and they were selling for millions and millions of dollars and then they were just fractionalizing the NFT itself and then selling that for a much, much cheaper price. 
and then that pushes the price up of the the whole NFT as a whole and just can bump it up exponentially. So once you fractionalize it into say a million parts for a million dollar NFT, they're all a dollar each. It's not that hard to go and bid $2 for one piece of the NFT. And that automatically puts the price up of the NFT by 100%. And so people could just easily take one tiny piece of the NFT and pay $20 for it and goes from a million dollars to a $20 million NFT. So this could be deemed illegal, uh, the SEC is saying here. So that might bring a dampener to the NFT space, but overall I'm very bullish of it. So I think there just needs to be some more rules set out about how NFTs work and how they're used, all that sort of stuff. Next piece, anonymous Bitcoin whale transfers 12,000 Bitcoin. You hear that? So more than a billion worth of Bitcoin has left Coinbase within the last few days. BTC's liquid supply at leading cryptocurrency exchanges is plunging. And so even with that, we're still seeing the Bitcoin price fluctuate. So more supply is leaving, but the price is not increasing as much. So I think we're just waiting on a few more big buyers to be coming in. Bitcoin whales are not selling their digital assets as only 36% of the Bitcoin supply has moved in the last six months. Last couple, then you can go to bed. Inside Polkadot's bid to offer a multi-chain alternative to Ethereum. So just a little update here, Polkadot. Polkadot has been attracting many development teams and significant outside investment lately. The vision behind the project is to make it uh, make possible for multi-chain applications to use multiple interoperable blockchains at once. So I'm just bringing this up because it looks like more of the narrative to Polkadot. And I think we'll start to see a little more of this coming up as uh, Ethereum's Layer 2 has been delayed. So this has been delayed till July. Optimism finally confirming that the network's mainnet public launch is not happening in March. Their new rough estimates for the launch is now July. So this is what everyone was banking on and I think that's why we've seen the Ethereum price wind up the way we have, which we began to uh, establish just a few weeks ago on that, that recent dump down to I believe it was around 1400 which we'll have a look at in the charts in just a moment. So with Ethereum a layer two, our goal is to make sure that the foundational projects, infrastructure providers, block explorers, wallets and token bridges have time to integrate, audit and test. So they want to make sure everything's going well in the background and the way I read this is similar to say Cardano which delayed everything for a, an extremely long time and it's not to say that they're not going to delay anything coming up, this is for Cardano. But these big projects which are trying to be decentralized happen to have delays. That's just the way it is. When you're trying to work with so many different companies from all over the place, that's just what happens. And I think people are kind of expect it, but at the same time, it doesn't help the price out. But it's just a matter of patience. We've got to wait for these guys to be building whatever it is they need to do in the background for these projects. The block shows us Visa is winning the battle for crypto cards. It's now poised to bring crypto as a service to financial institutions. So this is just another piece to show we've got some of the big names coming further into cryptocurrency. Crypto as a service, a new title here, CAAS. Visa in the space. Quick one for the Aussies. Australian government offers $6 million in grants to innovative blockchain teams. Check that out if you're in Australia and you want to get a grant, $3 million each. This is for the minerals industry and tax tracking in the food and beverage sector. So check that one out a little further down. Next article was on NFT. So this one's an NFT art in New York City. So they're opening up, located in Union Square, location will display NFTs on auction in higher resolution. So again, this is more NFTs getting into the mainstream adoption, non-fungible tokens. Don't, don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Mainstream, NFT, pumping it. We need to find those projects. TBK is one that you know that we love very much on the channel. NFT craze, this is with CRO's CEO, so crypto.com. They've really got, I think there's 100 million people in the crypto space and he believes that institutional money will bring the next 100 million crypto users to the space. And I agree, I think we're going to see the next 100 million come a hell of a lot faster than it took for the first 100 million to get here. So going from 100 to 200 million is going to be much, much faster than going from, you know, 50 to 100 million. It took over a decade for crypto to reach 100 million users or 1% of the global population. But Marzalek expects the next 100 million users to arrive in a far quicker time frame. Uh, I tend to agree with that and that is really going to surge some prices.
news article on the Bitcoin leaving the Bitcoin exchanges or crypto exchanges. Bitcoin buyers mean businesses Coinbase reserves drop 8 billion in three months. So more Bitcoin leaving the exchange. That wraps us up for the news. You can say goodbye to Izzy. Let's get into some charts. I'm going to go lay her down. Hopefully she can sleep without crying her head off. All right, guys, let's get into the charts. Here we are on the charts. I'm going to alert go off. Ramp is going nuts. But we are here to look at Ethereum, Bitcoin, DOT, and Uni. TVK, while we're here, this one's looking pretty decent. Looks like we may have a bit of a bottoming here. This is our NFT play on the channel. So I like this as a dollar cost averaging area. And you know from the fibs that we're looking at on the Bitcoin video a couple of days ago, which you possibly have learned a little more about, 38%, 50% good areas as a DCA area. Uh, if you're looking for a particular token to get into, they're pretty good points there. Let me start with Uni while we're down this way. And Uni is at 29 bucks. Not much has happened on the chart here. It dumped after the version three news came out. It just wasn't as good as people were expecting. We've come back down to the 50% from the last major range. So that's a good sign. Dollar cost averaging in here, 50% is probably not a bad area. Nothing is saying that the trend has reversed yet, but if we're just looking as a dollar cost averaging, buying on the dips on the way down, then rather than buying on every single day, this is another strategy just to be buying at 50% of major ranges. So uni has gone from a low of $26.50, currently at 29. Moving on, we're gonna look at Ethereum next because that's the big one here. The layer two has been delayed until July, but on the price, it hasn't affected the price. I'm looking at a three day chart here and we are up over the three days. And so bad news, you'd think layer two delay is bad news. Nothing, the price didn't go down, the price actually went up. And it's only a small range up, six, 7% over the last few days. Over the last day, uh, we wanna look at this day here, so 7% it went up yesterday. Uh, so overall, I just see this as more buying. I like this as a dollar cost averaging area, especially with this range that we are forming here. Now, if we bring these back up to the last previous area, so we've got one through here, mainly this is the one here and here. So if this is the previous uh, low that I'm connecting the low to the high, 50% drop. If we happen to use this as the reversal, then also we're at the 38, but ideally it's somewhere around this or this. This one, this low here at uh, the 11th of January, if you're trying to do this yourself at home, 11th of January to the current all time high, I'm using this range because that is the highest volume down day that we saw through early January that dipped the market before we ended up uh, reaching that all-time high. And so, so far, we've only dropped to the 61%. We may come down to this 50%, maybe the 1400, but that's what I'm talking about when it comes to a dollar cost averaging method, uh, areas of support to be buying in at rather than just buying on down days. So we saw a down day here, another day, down day here the 23rd of March, and then on the 24th of March, we had the down day, which hit the 61%. Then we had an inside day on the 25th. That was high volume, so that's a good sign, a reversal up, and then we powered away. So DCA, that's why I was talking about earlier. Ethereum is my, is my buy here, especially after Bitcoin is just holding its ground. I'm hoping for a 40,000 to 45,000 retest. And I know it sounds stupid, it's crazy, uh, you, you know, you're dreaming 40,000 to 45, probably could be dreaming, but I'm just playing it the way I'm seeing it and I'm not seeing a complete reversal yet. But at the moment we did hit our 50%, we hit our, our close target of our 61% drop using the current range. You can see here, this is a major low, that's a major high, 50% and there. And so that is a potential buying area. It's not enough for me. It might be enough for you because you don't have a position or you want to increase your position for Bitcoin. But I like Ethereum better because we haven't seen this huge run up on Ethereum. Plus I see a lot more coming for Ethereum. And I think it's going to improve its value against Bitcoin as well. So that's why I'm playing Ethereum over Bitcoin. Higher risk, hopefully a higher reward. If Bitcoin happens to break down, then we're just coming back here to use this low. And that's why I've got the arrow here looking for this 45 area. Plus it lines up nicely with another low back here. Other thing to note with Bitcoin, it is starting to range up. So I'm gonna use this tool tops to tops. And then again from the lows. And I'm sure we'll start to see this forming. Uh, if we happen to break up, 
then we'll start to see this forming uh, higher lows, high highs as it continues its way up to 60 again or 70,000. So I've got the two scenarios, the, uh, the bull scenario and the bear scenario so that I am prepared. So that's it for uh, Bitcoin. Last one I had here was DOT. And DOT was looking like a decent buy at around 30 bucks on this dip. And so this dip land us, landed us at the 50%. This is the recent major bottom uh, before we took off to this last major high in February of, uh, yeah, 20th of February. The last recent high was $42.30. And that low where I just said here, that low was at uh, around $14.70. And so when we get a range, 50%, brings us at $28. And so we dipped onto that range on increased volume. Then we had the reversal on higher volume. So that is more of a, more of a reversal sign that, I, that I'm seeing on something like Uni, which had a similar pattern, except Uni broke the tops and then fell on supposedly good news of, a, of an upgrade. So DOT, I think, is showing signs of a little more strength. And again, DCAing into something like DOT where we got uh, staking opportunities as well. So you've got staking on Cardano, you've got staking with DOT, good buying opportunities. That reminds me that ADA is another one we wanted to have a look at before we finish up with the chart. So ADA USD still struggling at the dollar twenty mark. Again, huge volume yesterday. Look at that volume down here, but we've seen a low, a much, much lower close. The, the, better, the bull side to this is, and the good case scenario, the better case is that we're not seeing a huge breakdown just yet. We do want to see some volume come in at these lows to support the price rather than seeing the volume come in on the highs like we saw back here on the Coinbase announcement and then drop. So you've got a lot of people buying in on the, the news or the announcement and then the price drops. And so that's usually a weaker sign. Whereas when we get to these lows, we're not seeing a lot of people come in to buy, uh, which means probably we see lower prices. Not saying we're going to go right down to here at 30 or 40 cents. Ideally, we want to see something underneath the dollar just to clear out some more weak hands. Buy some cheap Cardano. I'm sure you want that. And then start to restructure and move up. We'll just keep following this because at the moment we're just seeing weakness on these uh, on the buy ups. One more crypto I wanted to have a quick look at was Theta. And so Theta has gone on that massive run and what I'm looking at here is huge volume coming in on these highs. We're on a daily chart here, remember? Uh, if we throw it onto the candles, if you want to look at these, you've got big wicks, a lot of big wicks up here, high volume getting punched down, and then the volume is just beginning to lower every time we come back to test these highs, and we're not getting to those high prices of $14.80, $14.90. Then volume is again lower yesterday, lower close than the previous day's close. Today, we're going to see what happens. If we only come up to here and miss this top again, to me, that just signals that we should be probably start to head lower over the, the short term. But long term, Theta looks like a great project. That's your Hopium Free Cryptocurrency news for today. We looked at Ethereum, DOT, the charts for Uni, Theta, and Bitcoin. Good buy levels that I like the look of. Remember to do your own research. This is not financial advice. Uh, thank you very much for 100,000 subscribers and thank you for putting up with the baby with Izzy crying in the background. Hopefully you enjoyed just a little segment with, you, with her here. If you did, let me know. Like up the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated with more cryptocurrency news that comes out. Follow me on Instagram for daily updates with the Q&As, which I'll be doing straight after this video and uh, the retirement fund update, which you can see Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if you're ever asking yourself, what do I do with thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, all for your SMSF, go across, check that out. Today, I've got a video coming up for Crypto Australia or Crypto Tax Australia. So stick around if you're Aussie and you wanna know more about your taxes with your cryptocurrencies, that video will be coming out very, very shortly. And follow me on Twitter, out there now. Follow that link in the description. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.